One of the figures, and you've mentioned him several times throughout the interview, that was the subject of widespread criticism was Mayor Nagin. What was it like dealing with him in the chaos of this storm? Mayor Nagin was uh, a mayor who had never served in public office before he became mayor of New Orleans. And he was a peculiar sort in that he didn't trust anybody. And this, ha this was before the storm. This was well known about him before the storm. He was suspicious of everybody and everything. And he was hard to communicate with openly and honestly from the beginning. So now you layer on uh, you know, the, the, the storm uh, emotion for him and uh, his city is destroyed and he thinks that everybody's a booger bear and um, it, you know, it, it became very difficult. And then the communication system went down. So every 504 number that existed was flooded out when the central offices of Bell South got flooded. The central office is not an office building with where rooms of people are working. It's the office where all of the phone lines meet and connect to each other so that the world can communicate with people in the 504 district uh, or region. So every 504 number went down when the central office went down and it was nearly impossible. We could talk on satellite phones to people in Washington, D.C. or Baton Rouge when we were in New Orleans, but we couldn't call anybody who had a phone number that was based in the New Orleans area. So it became very, very difficult. We had liaisons who would try to transmit information to each other. I would go into the city looking for him. Uh, every now and then, I could not find him. Sometimes I could find him. And um, it, was, um, it was tough. And I think he was told by, by his police chief that people were gunning for him. So he got very afraid and didn't want to come out. Um, and you know, rumors destroy uh, every, effort that you have going, um, you know, you have to keep a clear head. You have, to, you have to put your emotional life on the shelf and you have to do clear analysis. And in those days, that's what we needed and it was the ingredient that was most missing. Now, former Mayor Ray Nagin, who you spoke with uh, at length during this interview and you dealt with at length during Katrina, is currently serving a 10-year prison sentence for corruption that occurred during his time in office. You said he ran during 2002 as a reformer. Um, were you surprised when he was convicted, charged, and sent to prison? I was surprised. I, I guess I never expected uh, Mayor Nagin to be worrying about personal benefit, and I was badly mistaken. I I knew that you know that he could have been a better mayor in some respects, but I thought that he was really working hard for his city and working in his own way. And I didn't judge him for that. I thought that, you know, in his own way, he was doing what he knew how to do, just as I knew in my own way what needed to be done for the state. But at the same time, I was extremely disappointed and surprised when I first learned about his, um, his involvement in personal gain.